Hello, hello. So I am back to do a medium for my day eight, I think this is. Okay, minimum time required. Okay, here we go. Gonna do this one and in 15 minutes, uh, go, all right. Minimum time required. You are planning uh, You are planning production of an, for an order. You have a number of machines that each have a fixed number of days to produce an item, okay? Uh, given that all the machines operate simultaneously, determine the minimum number of days to produce the required order. For example, uh, you have to produce 10 items. You have three machines uh, in an array uh, with the numbers 232 two, um, days to produce an item. So the following and the following is a schedule for the items that you can produce. Um, so on day two, you have two that you've completed because two of these are two. On day three, you've done one from the one in the middle. And on day four, you've done two more because the other two have produced it. Day six, they both converge. So all, all three of them are working and they create three. And then on day eight, you have 10. And that will give you a count of 10 here. So it takes eight days to produce 10 items. Uh, yes, and so I guess the output is the determine the number of days. So you're looking for eight as the number of days. Okay, do I loop by days? Because if I loop like one day at a time, so I could do a while loop. I could do while the total is less than the the target continue working, um, and I have an iterator by days, and I return the number of days at the very end of it. So how do I do the days then? That means every oh I see so. Maybe it's not that difficult actually. So I could do the number of days and then loop through the array of machines. And then whenever I do a modulus uh, equals zero, that means it's producing that day and I add that to the total. One thing that I'm thinking about like um, in terms of efficiency, I'm seeing that there are duplicates here. So instead of looping through an entire array, maybe I can loop through a, um, I could loop through a hash map, which has which has the total number of machine at that value, and then just increment by that. I think that would be a little bit more efficient. But anyway, I, I don't need to worry about efficiencies here. So I think that would actually um, work OK. That's not a really naive solution, though, right? Um, do I need a naive solution always? I, I, honestly, that's the first thing that comes to my head. So I think I'm just going to go with that. Um, so let's let's uh, let's code it up. Uh, I want to come back and explain my solution for this, which I completed on my own time. Um, I kind of just buckled in and stopped um, worrying about doing it my way and kind of look at just like what other ways are more efficient. And so here is the strategy that uh, I happened upon uh, or that I looked up, and it's the binary search um, algorithm effectively which takes a little um, explaining, I think. So I'm just gonna spend a little time just explaining what's going on here, um, the way that I understand it, which may not be perfect, but okay. So here's here's the idea. So these machines, imagine if you were to sort it, um, the, the machines having a uh, time of, uh, let me actually use their own, uh, four, five, six, okay? Four, five, six. And you can imagine this is being a very long, um, you know, very long. I'm going to add some more to like, uh, let's say nine and like 22. Okay. Okay. So how many days does this thing take? You can do a little educated, educated guessing here, which is to say that if you were to imagine this entire list again, this time with all fours, that four being the smallest number, that would be like the quickest, quickest um, this these machines would be able to work. Of course, that's unrealistic because we know that the numbers aren't all four. But if you look at the opposite side, which is that they're all 22, this would be the slowest, slowest that your group could possibly be. This is just to help set the upper and lower, uh, the lower and upper bound for a binary search. So I, so you would be able to um, concretely say that. If all of your machines were this number, the lowest number, this would be the quickest. And if they were all the slowest number, it would this would be the slowest that your machines would be able to perform. But the truth is somewhere in between the two because these numbers in the middle are somewhere in between the two, basically. So you would have to first sort the array and then find out the quickest and slowest and kind of make your assessment there. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna explain it. That's what this code here is doing. This is just finding the smallest and largest 
uh, numbers. Here I actually have it sorted it. You could definitely sort it first, but I felt like this was a slightly quicker way of doing it, going through the entire list and grabbing the smallest and, low, uh, smallest and largest um, because that's just easy, easier in my opinion. Uh, okay, uh, and that the idea here is that this is in big O of n time versus log n, n log n. So that's why I, I'm, I think it's better. But anyway, um, so once you get that, you gotta look at your rates. And so this is where things get a little bit more complicated. But the idea here is if you can translate this into days, how would you do that? And the way you would do that is if you look at the goal. So let's say the goal. Let's come here. Uh, I'm just pulling a random example. So, so if the goal is 12, and you have number of machines equals five, uh, let me make the goal easier just for a second. So, let's imagine the goal is 10, and you have five machines. Well, how um, uh, you could evenly distribute that goal onto the five machines, and that'd be two. So that'd be 10. Sorry, 10 divided by five equals two um, items so goal is in items right so this is sorry um, so two items per machine so that that would kind of look like uh, the situation here of this is working in the most optimum situation which is that each machine produces one item per day and that in total two items will come out of each machine the problem requires a, a machine to have at least one day so that's the one here so the minimum that the, these could do and I'm assuming just raw integers by the way no fractions um, that this that each machine at, could at the quickest it can possibly operate at is one item per day each machine produces one item per day so how many days would this take uh, in the most optimal situation well Day one, it produces five. Day two, it produces 10. So this would take two days, which is effectively what this is saying. This is going to say two days. That is the most optimal it could possibly be. So now we can start thinking about this. Well, um, if we were to look at the slowest, sorry, the quickest, our machines could possibly operate at. Well, we look at this number here and this number here and see what it would take to get there. In that case, it would be times four. So this would be, sorry, I'm gonna copy this. So this times four for each machine equals what we're talking about the quickest, right? So you can imagine how many days is very intuitive. It's also um, two days. Two days also times four that equals eight days. So that is to say, if our if our machines are working at their quickest of, of the quickest of all the machines in the array, then uh, with a goal of ten, it will take eight days. And let's think about that. So if this takes four days to produce one item, all these produce one item after four days. So after four days, that's five items after eight days that's ten items so it, it, it makes intuitive sense right you can say the same thing for the slowest I, I know I'm taking a long time for this because it took me a long time uh, to like really get the hang of this um, to get to my very poorly formatted 22 you know this is obviously gonna be time 22 and same thing how many days well, it's going to be 2 times 22, or 44 days for my slowest. And that is the beauty of this setup here. We can now look at the minimum and maximum number of days, and then like back and then you can like back calculate from there effectively. What I mean by that is, um, if you're doing your binary search, then you would assume that the number is in between these two somewhere. So now with this information, we can kind of work backwards because we now we think of the now that we have these days, that's the the min equals eight, the max equals 44. We can look at the middle of those two 
and and just check to see if our machines uh, appropriately work at that level. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's say that our min is eight, max is 44. Oh my goodness, what is the? Let me do a little quick math here. Okay, so haha, uh, 44 minus eight. All right, and divide by two because I have no uh, idea. So it's 18 apparently, right? So the mid, so let me go here. Uh, mid of those two, which I should put in the middle really, mid equals uh, 18. Okay, so that means that we can, um, we'll just assume for now that 18 is the target number of days. Well, then we can go through our list here and see if that will produce the number that we're looking for. Um, and so, so this at 18 days, how many items produced? You could just take the uh, division of 18 divided by each item and you just floor that. So um, so 18 divided by four, four times. So this is gonna be the uh, number of items. So 18 goes into four, four times evenly. Um, five goes into that three times. Uh, six goes into that nicely three times as well. Nine goes into that two times and 22 doesn't go in at all. Okay, so how many items are produced? We just add this up and that looks like 12 items. So, so this is 12 items total. So now we can look at the goal versus uh, the goal of 10 here. So it looks like we produced a little bit too much. So that lets us know that we, uh, our midsection actually might be okay, but we gotta, we have to like look at the midsection versus the min and then see exactly where the perfect target is. The perfect target will be one more than uh, missing this 10. So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep going through this actually. So let's do that together. So let's say uh, our mid stays that, sorry, our min stays eight. Our max will now be 18 and our mid will be, um, and that's 13 in the middle. All right, cool. I think I, I think I did that math right. Oh boy, me and my math. Okay, cool. So we assume 13 is the number of days as the target. So I'm just going to kind of like copy all this real quick. I know I'm going like long-winded with this, but that's because it's it is something I took a while to understand myself as well. All right, so at 13 days, what do we get? Um, so th I'm gonna clear this real quick. So 13 goes into four two times, five two times, six two times, nine one time, and zero for that, giving us a total of seven seven items versus ten. That means that we're too low. We can definitely bump it up. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So in that situation, we bump up the min to the midsection, which is 13, but we add one because we were definitely too low here. So we actually go to 14. And our max will be the, will still be 18 the max because the number is somewhere in between the two. So now 14 and 18, uh, this one I think is a little easier. I can do 16 for that. So we can say, hey, at 16 days, how many items will we produce? Okay, so let me just cut this out. So at 16, you get four, you get three, you get two, you get one here and zero there. Okay, and that will produce very nicely uh, uh, ten, 10 items here. So this might be our goal, it might not be. We don't actually know because there's, there's um, the way that the machines are working there may be like a little bit overhang so we're trying to like zoom in on just below our target and then we just do it one more than that because uh, that will give us our actual um, number of days uh, to like push it over the edge so we're not actually done yet <clears throat> but we can definitely say that 10 is a good um, potential for the max. So our max will be 16. Our min stays the same and I would try 15. So we're definitely zoning in on the right number. Okay, cool. So um, 15 goes into uh, four goes into 15 uh, two times. Uh, five goes into it three times exactly. Wait, am I getting something wrong? Hold on. Four goes into 15 three times that's my mistake um 
six goes into that twice, then one, and then zero. Okay, so a little bit different. Now we have nine items. Nine items total versus ten. So here, now we know, hey, we can definitely bump this up a little bit. And when we do that, we get into a situation where, uh, and I'll just copy this down here, where our midsection gets bumped down to, um, uh, what do you call it? So our our mid our min is too low, so we definitely need to take the mid, and we take the mid plus one because we're um, we're, we're trying to find the one that's right above it. So this actually becomes sixteen. It goes from fifteen. Uh, so the mid is fifteen. It goes to sixteen, and then we have a max of sixteen. And now we've converged, and that is our answer. And this is binary search. And so I know it took me a while to get to that, but that is what this code is effectively doing. And this is what it looks like. Um, so here I find the min max. Here I will um, figure out the middle, the min, the um, the min max days, which I do by calculating the rate, which is the goal divided by the number of machines. Then I multiply that by the biggest and the smallest to get my minimum days and maximum days, and then that'll be my uh, window to start doing, doing my binary search in. And then while min days is less than max days do your binary search effectively. Um, one thing I will note here is this calculation here, which is a little squished, um, but effectively, this is exactly what I was doing before where I, did the, I had to calculate each element. Um, and all I did was take the, I, I did a machine.reduce, I take the uh, previous amount and I add it, I add the floored division of days divided by machine. And that'll give you your total. And they can compare that to the goal. If you're less than the goal, then we know that we increment the minimum by one, and set that. Sorry, you increment the middle number by one, and you set that to the min days. Else, you take the max days and you set that to the middle of days. You don't minus one there because that might actually be your target. And then you just return one or the other; they'll be the same. So min days or max days, I don't think that'll make much of a difference. So if I run this, it works. And if I submit that, it also should work pretty pretty quickly. Binary search, folks. I uh, hope that wasn't too long. I know that was kind of frustrating for me uh, getting through that, but uh, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you next time.